Howdy folks, and welcome to Sniper Elite V2 with the Mighty Jingles. I haven't had this game for long, um, less than a week. Uh, and I have to say, I am having fun with it, but with a couple of reservations. It's kind of like Splinter Cell, but a very, very, very violent Splinter Cell. And the main, well, the initial attraction of playing Sniper Elite is getting those crazy sniper shots. That's what draws people into getting the game. Shots like this. Yeah, this probably isn't a game for your kids. Um, it is ridiculously violent. So, fair warning. Uh, if what you've just seen offends you, don't watch the rest of this video, because there's a lot worse than that coming up. Um, you know, the, I, I do feel that I should warn you that this is exactly the sort of thing that you're going to see from here on in. There's going to be a lot more violence. It's going to be very bloody. It's going to be very gory, and it isn't going to be pleasant. But I like it. So, what's the game actually about? Well, uh, the story is it's in the closing days of the Second World War. The German V-2 rocket scientists are scrambling to sell their services to the highest bidder. And the Americans, the British, the Russians, everybody are trying to loot Nazi Germany of whatever technological secrets they can lay their hands on uh, before hostilities end. And that's where you come in, uh, on the tail of particular V2 rocket scientist who they're trying to hand over to the Soviets. He want to make sure that doesn't happen. So, gameplay mechanics. You've basically got three weapons. You've got your, uh, your sidearm, which in this case is a well-rod silenced pistol. You've got your, uh, your assault weapon, which at the start of the game is an M1 Thompson submachine gun. And then you've got your sniper rifle, and it's all about the sniper rifle. Um, you begin the game with a Springfield M1903. Very, very good rifle. But there are various different weapons and unlocks that you can earn throughout the course of the game, but it's pretty much all about the sniper rifles. Although I do like this silence pistol as well. So this is the first mission that you play in the game, after the tutorial. And you're going to see a couple of uh, fades between scenes as I've just basically cobbled together a selection of edits. Like that. And the objective of this mission is to assassinate one of the V2 scientists, stop his convoy, assassinate him before he can be handed over to the Russians, and retrieve the documents he's carrying. Here we've pulled up our binoculars and we're marking targets. And like I said at the start, this game is all about the ridiculous sniper rifle action. Oh, that's going to stink. The warning is going to get violent.
And you know, it could have got very boring very quickly if they'd used the same, exact same effect for every sniper rifle shot you take. But I, I like the way they mix it up a little, just so you're not watching the same thing, or exactly the same thing, over and over and over. And that, at least at first, is what the game's all about. And it's certainly the game's main selling point. Now, unlike on the consoles, uh, there is multiplayer for this game. Uh, and that kind of leads us on to the, the longevity of the game. Are you going to come back and replay it? Uh, are you going to have a reason to carry on playing it after you've completed the single player campaign? Um, yes and no. They have thrown in a whole bunch of trivial shit. Like, collect there are various different gold bars and wine bottles scattered around the levels. And if you want to, you can spend a lot of time running around the levels trying to track down all of those gold bars and, and, uh, and wine bottles. I really couldn't care less about that sort of thing. That's just something that they've tacked on to add a little bit of depth to the game. Uh, and I really couldn't care less. But for me, what's going to keep me coming back is not the multiplayer. Uh, apparently this is actually pretty good played cooperatively. Uh, I can see that being fun. Player versus player? Yeah, not so much. I'm just, I mean, I haven't tried the player versus player, but apparently there's never anybody on the servers. Uh, and even when there are, it's just, it's like playing a Call of Duty map where everybody's camping with a sniper rifle. Really, really boring. So, no, the, the multiplayer options aren't going to be enough to keep me interested in this game. What may keep me playing it is playing it through again and again and again um, on increasingly more difficult realism settings. At the moment I'm playing it on the cadet setting because I'm crap. Um, and there, is n there are no bullet ballistics, the enemies, you know, they're not that smart and so on and so on. You can make things harder for yourself. You can have accurate ballistics You know, where stuff like this doesn't happen. Um, the bullets impacting solid objects in the body will affect the trajectory of the shell. But what you can also do, and I think what's going to keep me coming back to the game, is clearing the levels in the most perfect way possible. And you're going to see what I mean when we come up to the ambush, which is... Uh, I'm just doing a, a spot of recon in the ambush position, right here. There are a couple of annoying little things, like right here I've just cleared that road. But as I come around this corner... Where did they come from? I suppose it's possible they came out of that building. So it's not a massive, you know, issue. They heard the shots and they came out on the street to investigate. It's impossible. But there were just little things like this.
So far at least, they're, they're not enough to spoil my enjoyment of the game. Now, you could lay charges that the game is, is very linear and scripted, um, and that's certainly true. At least, well, so far anyway, there haven't been any of those really, really annoying quick-time sequences, you know, where you have to hammer this button or that button to avoid being strangled by the guard, or, you know, just lame crap like that. Which I am grateful for. However, well, here we go. Um, I would have appreciated a bit more freedom to set up this ambush in my own way. I've got landmines in my inventory, but the convoy won't start until I place two explosive charges along the route and then get to the vantage point. And it would, would have just been nice, particularly because I can see myself having more fun replaying this and trying to do things in different ways. For example, instead of setting explosive charges on these two trucks, I may like to place landmines, stop the convoy that way, or a combination of them both. But the game insists that, you know, this is how this particular sequence is going to start. So what I'm doing here, here you can see my inventory, and I'm looking for a rock. And I'm going to toss that rock to distract the attention of these two German soldiers. And now we can get another two for one. There you go. I've got a friend on the other side of the road, but he hasn't seen me. I mean, he knows somebody's just shot his two friends, but he, he, he hasn't spotted my location. I'll just wait for him to get curious. And then we'll give him the good news. And now we're clear, we can set the second charge. And then get to our, our vantage point, our sniping position. And that will start the whole convoy ambush sequence. But despite my misgivings about the way this particular bit is scripted, you do have a lot of latitude in how you're actually going to go ahead and take out the convoy. There are numerous different ways of doing it, some more efficient than others. You don't have to shoot every single soldier. You'll see what I mean when I actually come through to, to doing it. So first thing I'm doing is I'm clearing my way to the vantage point. Don't know how many troops are in this building, although you'd think with all the gunfire <laughs> that's been going on outside, if there was anybody in here, they might have come out to investigate. But again, you know, you could argue this is Berlin in the last days of the Second World War. Gunfire in the streets isn't exactly a strange occurrence. Hello. Somebody spotted me. Sniper on the roof. And again, this is just one of those little things. Oh, first of all. And yeah, if I'd been playing on slightly more realistic difficulty settings, I'd have been dead there. But yeah, that sniper on the roof. And it's just one of those little things that that breaks the, the immersion in the game. What was he doing up there the whole time I was shooting everybody in the street down below?
And here we go. And if anything, this is going to be the sort of thing that keeps me coming back to the game. Trying to do this in various different, and I have to admit, they are pretty imaginative, amusing and entertaining ways. And I'm sure that there's going to be a way for me to pull this off even more efficiently if I have another go. So I'm going to wait for the armoured car and the truck to get next to the first explosive. And that takes them both out. And I cannot let this guy escape or its mission failed. Take that in your big fat stupid bald head. And now it's just a case of survival. Oh great, a tiger. But remember the first explosive charge we placed? Or alternatively, if you're feeling particularly clever, you can shoot the engine caps on these fuel tanks. But that gave me an idea about these vehicles. And yep, you can do that too. And I had a bit of a derp moment here. I was pressing the wrong key and I actually stood up while I was under fire. So that was a bit silly. to admit there's at least one more of them down here somewhere but I just couldn't see it and again if this was real this would probably have gotten me killed at this point where is that from? oh there he is sit down son That is pretty much the first level of the game. And as I said, I can see myself going back and doing this particular sequence over and over and over again in an effort to do it the most efficient or imaginative way possible. And, and you do have other tools. You've got trip mines, you've got land mines. Uh, there's all sorts of different things. You can drop sticks of dynamite along the route and shoot them to explode those. You don't... There's no one way of completing each level. I mean, they are fairly scripted, but within the boundaries of the script, you do have a lot of latitude in how you go about achieving your objective. Uh, and and I, do, I like that option. Where'd that other one go? Not down that side. Is he down the other side? Oh crap, he is down that side. Switch to my Tommy gun. And now we just have to retrieve the documents the egghead was carrying. 
then get the hell out of Dodge. And that's it. That's the first level of the game. So, Sniper Elite V2. Um, it's not a great game. And it does have its limitations. But I've been enjoying it. Um, and if you like the idea of what you've seen here, um, it's available on Steam. It's not that expensive. I think you might enjoy it too. So, I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough of the first game of Sniper Elite V2. Um, and if you've got nothing better to do with your time, you could uh, you could do worse than trying it out. As always, take care out there, and I'll catch you next time.